Good morning, everyone. I'm Michael. I'm going to be your host for this morning's session. Today, we're looking at one of our VAT proficiency webinars, so session number two today, which is preparing and reconciling your VAT return. So we're going to be looking at the wizard, guiding you through that, giving you an idea what the various options are. Uh, so we're going to go as far as step two to actually reconcile the return today. Step three is covered this afternoon in session number three. That will be at two o'clock. I've included a link on your follow-up email just in case you haven't registered for that one. Okay, so just before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping just in case you it's maybe your first webinar with us or maybe you haven't attended one in a while. So just a little reminder, you don't need a microphone for these sessions. If you've got one, it will just be muted automatically when you can't unmute yourself. So any questions for us today, you'll need to pop them into the questions panel. To access that, you just need to click your little icon on your toolbar down the right hand side of your screen. It's the one that looks like the speech bubble. Give it a click, it'll expand your panel. You get the box in the bottom right hand corner and that's where you can submit any questions or comments that you have today. Today we're joined by Abby and Tina and Jackie, who will also all be on hand to answer any questions that you might have. So keep your questions coming. Uh, we'll try our best to pick up as many of those up as we can. Uh, and we'll also hang around at the end of the session as well to, if there are any outstanding questions, we'll, we'll try and pick them up then as well. Possibly run a few extra demos along the way as well. Now, if you do want a copy of today's slides, however, there's, there's not a great deal of information on them. I would encourage you to get the information from our help center instead. That's got all the detailed step-by-step -step guides you need uh, to run through the VAT return and a lot more. So do, do take the opportunity to get that as well. But if you do want a copy of today's slides, you can download them uh, again via the little icon in your toolbar. As normal, you will receive an email later today, and that will contain links so you can register for other webinars, including this afternoon's session, uh, which is at two o'clock. As I say, that covers part three of the Art Return Wizard. And also, it'll include a link so you can register for other webinars and also so you can watch other recordings as well if you've missed any sessions previously. Right, okay, just about ready to get started, so we'll, we'll just about get going. So this is what we're going to cover today. So a little bit of introduction to the VAT Proficiency Bide series of webinars we are running. So seven, seven topics that we're covering. I'll tell you a little bit more about those in just a moment. Uh, today's demonstration, though, we're going to be looking at the VAT Return Wizard. This session is suitable for UK and for the Republic of Ireland. Uh, I've got the various screenshots along the way uh, on the slides today. So you can see there's very little difference other than the appearance of the VAT Return itself and obviously how the figures calculate. But the, the process that we're going to be running through today is pretty much the same. So although we will be using a UK VAT return in the demo today, uh, pretty much the same if you're in Ireland as well. So we're going to be looking at the process of preparing your VAT return, that's step one within the wizard, and then we'll move on to step two as well. And as I say, we've got other webinars which will support the rest of that, that wizard. Just at the end of the session, we'll explain more about the additional support, uh, give you an idea of what's coming up, and also if there are any outstanding questions, we'll pick those up as well. Now, just before we get going today, what I want to do is pop a quick poll on your screen. So if you don't mind, do engage with us. Let me know. Is it a UK return that you submit or is it a Republic of Ireland? Or maybe if you're an accountant or you've got a business based in, in both regions, that you actually do both. So if you don't mind, choose an option. And then I'll just let a, a decent percentage of the votes come through just to give us an idea. It's just to give us an idea again who's attending today. It won't actually it won't actually impact on on the content we're covering today. All right, okay, let me just close that poll. I'll share the results with you as well, just so you can see what everyone has voted for. So we've got about 92% of you that are submitting a U UK return only, 7% uh, uh, for Republic of Ireland. And for those of you that are doing maths and thinking it doesn't quite add, that doesn't quite add up to 100%, we've got 2% of you uh, that do both as well. So there must be, I'm assuming there's a little bit of rounding on those results as well. Anyway, we'll hide that. Uh, we'll get started with the uh, demos today. 
Right, so a little bit of background to the VAT proficiency sessions just before we do get going. Obviously, we're running these, uh, we started yesterday looking at tax codes, and we're running them up to the end of next week. So it'll actually be Thursday when we're running up to uh, next week. So there are seven topics in total. And you can earn a digital badge by attending at least four of the different topics. So it doesn't matter whether it's this week or next week, combination of the two. As long as you attend four or more of the different topics, you must attend the live sessions as well. The recordings, just watching a recording doesn't count, unfortunately. Uh, so if you attend four or more, you'll be emailed your digital badge. Now that will be sent uh, by the, I think it's the 12th of April. So we've given ourselves two weeks to sort all of that out afterwards. And that will be sent out. Now today of those seven sessions we're looking at session two so preparing and reconciling your fat return again if you've downloaded the handouts uh, you'll find that the register now button works if you haven't registered for the other sessions so if you haven't do get yourself registered the links will be included on your follow-up email as well Right, okay, let's get stuck into some demonstrations then. So we're gonna look, first of all, at how you go about accessing the VAT return. And what I'll quickly do is I'm just gonna show you on screen. I've got a few of these where, so we can compare the the look of the, the UK editions when you set up to, to uh, be based in the UK and when you're based in uh, Ireland. So you can basically, the, to access the VAT return, it's gonna be the same steps. You're gonna go into the VAT module, which is on the, uh, the taskbar down the left hand side and then on your toolbar yes you've got slightly different icons depending where you're based uh, you will choose the the VAT return option at the top right let me switch across to my screen so as I mentioned I am going to be set up for a UK based company today so we're just going to go into VAT on the left hand side there and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click VAT return at the top. Now, if you do have something highlighted, so on your list, if you've got any previous VAT returns there, if there's any of them highlighted and you go into VAT return at the top, you'll see it actually brings up the details of that previous return that you've reconciled. So make sure you've got nothing selected or click clear at the top. So if you just click clear, it'll remove any highlights and then pop into the VAT return. So this is where I mentioned at the beginning, today we're covering uh, all of the uh, options in step one and step two, and we'll end up on step three. Now, Jackie is actually covering step three this afternoon, so all of the tasks on that. We'll cover some of the options that are shown on that screen when we get there towards the end of the session, but it's primarily the tasks in step one and step two that we're covering in this morning's session. Now, this is what the UK uh, wizard would look like if I switch back to the slides very briefly. Again, I've got a screenshot so we can see the differences between the two. So the tasks actually down the left are actually exactly the same. We've got a backup option, the option to set the date range, and we've got the VAT verification options, and we've got the calculate return uh, button as well at the bottom. It's just really the VAT return. Obviously, they're all going to show zero zero values at this point in time it's just that that bit that looks a little bit different to, again depending which region you're set up for right let's go, pop back to my screen uh, the first step so this this series of tasks and the idea with this wizard as well is that it will it brings certain things in so many years ago the backup option wasn't included in the VAT return screen so the idea was we've brought that in just to almost like remind you that really you want to be taking a, VAR, a backup before you actually run through the VAT return process and reconcile it it's a process that can't be done undone manually the only way you could undo a reconciliation if you do get that far and flag your transactions is actually by restoring a backup that you would take prior to actually running that VAT return. So a backup's easy enough. We just click the option. It'll bring up the standard sort of uh, backup screen. I'm sure you're very familiar with this one. In this instance, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna include my data files. Now, it's up to you which ones you want to include. Make sure you do include your data files. It should all really be on a daily basis if you are backing up regularly. It should only be data files that you really need to include. 
give it a file name. I'll just call mine VAT return. Very creative. So we'll call it VAT return and I'm gonna, I'll just save my backup to my desktop. Obviously, if you need to change that, just a case of clicking browse and then browsing to, to where you wanna save that. So I'll just click OK. It does prompt me, would you like to check your data before you back up? If I click yes to that, let it run through. Obviously, if it finds any errors, warnings or comments, which obviously it's found a few anomalies on mine, uh, you can just click the, the options down the left hand side. So comments, as an example, I've got some transactions which are dated in the future. So it's telling me I've got 28 of those. If I need the detail, I can expand that one and I can see the, the transactions, the detail, so transaction number, and I, if necessary, it may be I've just entered something in error. But it is just my dummy data that I'm using today, so nothing to worry about. So I just close out of that, it'll complete the backup. I'll just let that run through. It tells me it has been successful, so we just okay that. And that's that first task done. So nice and easy, that one. Obviously, if you, you want to take a backup and check your data before you even come into the VAT return, you don't then need to do it again at this stage. It's just in case you forgot, it gives you nice, easy access. Next, we want to set our date range. So what VAT period are you wanting to calculate uh, the VAT return for? Now, by default, you've got this sort of format where it's going to ask you for, for essentially months. And the idea of this, we often used to find when it was a leap year that people would forget to choose the 29th of February. So you, you'd key in the date that you were running the VAT return up to. And people would just out of out of habit, they would key in the 28th. So, or maybe even a normal month where you might have 31 days and someone's keyed in the 30th. Now you can still do that if you want to. You can switch to a custom date range and key it in that way, but you might as well just take the easier option and choose this the standard option. Now you will find, if I just move this out of the way, that your your VAT period, the start, will actually pick up from the last time you run a VAT return on your set of data. So that should be correct, which it is on mine because it's an older set of data. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna run mine for, I'll run it for three months. So we'll do, appreciate it's a, an older set of data. So we'll do February, March, and April. So it tells us there what the date range is, tells us we're covering in three months and we're ready to go at that point. Now we've got a little checkbox here. This include reconcile transactions and if you, Sort of click on the little sort of a question mark there would bring up a little bit of help relating to that. Now what this does is it's really there for historic purposes. You don't really need to use it these days. Uh, but what it's saying is, do you want to include reconciled transactions? Now, prior to sort of this wizard coming along and you're having the option to save a copy of the VAT return, which is what it does in the background, a lot of people used to, for the VAT quarter, you, you would run month one and you would agree the figures and then you would reconcile it, flag your transactions. So, and then you would do month two when you got to the end of that one, you would flag your transactions as reconciled, then month three. And then what you would do is you would just manually add up all your figures and submit that online. So these days, you don't, you don't really do that. You just, you would run it for the full quarter. So what, what you would do in the, it, historically is if you didn't have a VAT return saved in the background and you wanted to include those transactions that you flagged as reconciled, you would tick that box. So it would look for any transactions in your VAT period, so February to April in my case, that are dated within that date range, that are a VATable transaction, that are already flagged as reconciled. Now, these days, you wouldn't really have any transactions that fall into that category. So you would leave this blank, no need to select that. It's really just if you're trying to look at an old VAT period and you don't have one saved, that you would maybe use that just for analysis purposes. So just leave it blank. We then come on to VAT verification. Now, VAT verification, Again, it was added when 
we went to the VAT return wizard. And the idea of this is it brings a number of checks into, into this area within the VAT return itself to try and maybe identify those anomalies. Now it's not necessarily these checks, and when we see the results in a moment, they're not necessarily saying there's anything wrong. It's just saying, right, this doesn't look right. Do you need to check it? Is it is it something that you forgot to do uh, beforehand? So we brought that into into the VAT return wizard just to try and in, in, in increase sort of your I suppose your confidence with your VAT return, and again avoid those those questions that we used to get where people would say right i've run my VAT return i've reconciled it and now i've just realized maybe i've got some invoices that fell into that period that i haven't updated to the ledgers i forgot about them what can i now do and because you've reconciled it's well actually they'll just be picked up on your next return so the idea of these verification checks is that they're just brought inside the VAT return itself now it says eight checks some of you will it will say seven the number of checks that you have it will be dependent on uh, the level of software you have. So if you're on the professional level of the software, you get eight checks. If you're on either the essentials level or the standard level of CH50 accounts, you will have seven. Now, if I just quickly pop into settings, just to give you an idea of what these look like. So you've got, in this case, I'm on, I am on the professional level. So it's, these will all be ticked by default. So do you want to include that check or not? Now we are running a separate session on this, this particular, uh, ver these verification checks. So if you are wanting to find out more information about them, again, please come along to that specific webinar. So I think that's on, uh, that one be to tomorrow afternoon, I think it is that session, if you are wanting to find out about these specific settings. Now if I just pop back to the slides for a moment, I've got a copy just so you can see what the, the two look like side by side. So the one we're just looking at is the, the UK list of VAT verification settings. I've also got a list of the, the Irish ones. So if you are set up for an Irish return, the, the settings, as you can see, they're exactly the same, other than the uh, in the other potential issues section towards the bottom there, you've got slightly different rates, obviously, on your on your VAT rates. That's only the only difference. The checks themselves are exactly the same. So as I say, if you all want to find out more about them and how they work, what, you, what they're identifying, then please get yourself signed up for session number five. We're running that this week and also another another uh, time next week as well. So get yourself signed up again. Links are included on your follow-up email. Right, let's go back to my desktop. So we've, we're going to leave them all, all ticked in this instance. Now, you might find that going forward that certain ones you think, well, I, I don't use that. That's not applicable to me, even if you're on the professional level. So this one here, identify purchase orders. So if you're not on the professional level, you wouldn't even have this option. Uh, if you are on the professional level, but maybe you don't even use purchase orders, you could remove the tick. There may be other ones as you gain a bit more knowledge of these options as well, which ones you choose to leave ticked and which ones actually you think, well, I, I, I don't want to use that check. So I'm just going to leave them all ticked. I'll click OK. And at this point, we're ready to click Calculate VAT Return. Now, as you can see, step one, so preparing your VAT return, nice and straightforward. We're taking a backup, we've set our date range, the VAT verification, we didn't actually change anything in there, we just went to have a quick look at it, everything's ticked, and we're ready to just click Calculate VAT Return. So I'll give it a click. Now, when we calculate the VAT return, what it's going to do, it's telling me at the top here, now, you might not actually get this actually window pop up in the first instance. So you're only going to get this message if you've got what you would term a late entry. Now, I'll come back to just explaining what that is in a moment. But when we click calculate, what it'll do, it'll look at your VAT scheme. It'll look at the VAT period you've specified. And it's going to try and identify which transactions it needs to include in your VAT return that haven't yet been included in a VAT return. So it's telling me in my instance, 691 transactions have been found for this specific return. 
And it's also telling me one of the transactions is unreconciled and before the start of the VAT period I've specified. So this is what you would term a late entry. So it's where you've maybe you've reconciled your VAT return. So in my case, it was uh, up to the end of uh, January 2022 in the example I, I was using today. So we've reconciled the VAT period and then what we've done is we've had a late entry. So we've backdated that transaction with the actual date of it. So it's prior to the start of my current VAT return period. It's classed as a VATable transaction. So it's asking me, do I want to include it? And in this instance, it's listing it. And do I want to include it? Yes, I do. Now, you might have a few of those. Now, if that's the case and you want to go away and investigate those or make amends, you can print or send to Excel just so you've got the ref for reference purposes. If you've got more than one listed, it does look like you can highlight a specific transaction and you've got an include or ignore option in the bottom right hand corner here. Now, when you get that option, it is all or nothing. So if you've got multiple late entries listed, do you want to include them all or do you not? So do you want to ignore them? Now, if they are just late entries, we would always recommend that you should include them. Now, a late entry could be as well that you've uh, you've entered a transaction, uh, it was reconciled, it appeared on a VAT return and maybe you deleted it. So the software needed to reverse that for you. Maybe you amended a transaction that was previously reconciled. So again, the software has needed to make some sort of adjustment for you. So again, that would be listed. You need to include it in your return. So we're going to choose to include it. And that takes us on nicely onto step two. So again, just to remind you, I am on a, a UK return. If I just switch back to my slides again at this stage, just so you can see, other than the VAT return on the on the sort of the right hand side of the window, when you get onto step two, you can see the rest of the options are the same. So we've got an option to view the results of any uh, VAT verification results that are being found for your specific return. You get an option to make adjustments, add attachments. You've got the option to print your reports and view your reports. You've got two options for that one. And you've also got the option at the bottom to reconcile the VAT return. Now you've also got your calculated figures for your specific return on the right hand side. Now you'll notice next to some of the, the values that are being calculated as well, you get this sort of little icon with the, the arrows on it. And that's what we would term the drill down option. So we're gonna be showing you how you can use that in just a moment. Let's get back to my desktop and we'll start running through uh, step two. Right, so at the top here, it's telling me I've got 664 potential queries. So that's obviously quite a lot. I wouldn't expect you to get that many. Now this, the verification results are based on those uh, checks that we've just looked at. So where we had seven or eight checks, depending on the level of your software. Now, if anything is identified, you'll have this view results option available to you. So I'll just click that and it will list the checks. Now, anywhere it hasn't found anything, so I've only got one in my example, it'll just have a tick next to it. Any that were that were switched on, where it's found some potential queries, I'm not going to say issues because they're not necessarily issues. They're just potential queries that maybe you need to investigate. It. So what you can do is where you've got this sort of amber triangle indicating there are some potential queries, you can click view. So if we just choose this one as an example, it's telling me four invoices and credits which have not been updated. So I click view, it then gives me that list. So it gives me the things like invoice numbers, and then I can go away, right, I've, ent I've entered some invoices, should I, should I have updated those to the ledgers or not? Maybe I keyed it in and actually we, rather than delete it, we just left it there and we didn't update it to the ledgers or have it, is it just a case, I, I forgot to update it to the ledgers. 
So it's just a case of you working through those to try and identify, right, is, is there anything that you, you need to make amendments to? Now, you can't make amendments in the screen. If it finds anything and you need to make an, an, an amendment or edit a transaction or update an invoice to the ledgers, you would need to close out of your VAT return and then go make that change and then come back in. Right. Next, we've got the option to make adjustments. Now, if chances are, you will, uh, depending on your VAT scheme, so if you're on things like a partial exemption scheme, for instance, you will probably always use make adjustments. So you can adjust the figures based on your VAT scheme calculation. You can adjust the figures that have been calculated. Uh, for the vast majority that are on just a normal scheme, then you'll probably never ever need to make adjustments. If you do need to make an adjustment, it's straightforward enough. Now, if you need to make an adjustment, so let's say you are in the UK, you want a partial exemption scheme. If you need to make an adjustment, when you click into this option and enter details, and then you move all the way through the VAT return, it will pick up today's date for that adjustment. So if you are going to be making an adjustment, we always recommend that before you even come into the VAT return, that you change your program date to the last day of the VAT period that you're running your VAT return up to. So you would do that via settings, change program date before you even come into the, uh, the VAT return itself. Right, now if you do need to make an adjustment, really easy, so just get back here, we we'll just click make adjustments. You've got the, again, you've got the calculated figures from the VAT return in the background. Obviously, you, it would just show the appropriate ones if you are in Ireland as well. So some of them will be grayed out. They're just the calculated fields. So you can't post adjustments to those. If you need to make an adjustment though, just a case of which box do you need to adjust? You would click the little pencil icon. And if I do that for box one on the UK return, it's gonna ask me for a reason. So I would need to enter some text in there and then I can enter an adjustment value and I can do either a positive or a negative adjustment. And you could do multiple adjustments as well. So if you've been advised by HMRC that you need to adjust your next return, that's how you can easily do that. But as I say, chances are the vast majority, you'll never need to use this option. So you would enter your adjustment, click save, It'll take you back to the screen. It would show the adjustment that you've keyed in. It would then adjust the reported figure. And when we click close, it would update the figures that have calculated on the VAT return itself. So I'm just gonna leave mine set to zero. Now, if you have made adjustments, you would normally always attach some sort of documents or partial exemption, for instance, you may find this, you calculate figures based on spreadsheets, or you might have all the documents that you just want to attach as well. You would just click add attachments and you can browse for those and attach any files to the VAT return that you need to. Next, we come on to the analysis of your figures. So you've got two options when it comes to analysis. You've got options to run reports, but you've also got the figures that have been calculated on the return itself. Now, the vast majority of queries that come to our support, support line probably don't realize that you can drill down on the VAT return figures. So when I talk about drill down, I mean these little icons attached to the boxes against the figures on, on certain boxes of your VAT return. So for instance, let's just say on this UK return, I want to have a look at right, this figure in box one. Where does it come from? Or maybe it's a little bit higher than I thought it was or, or lower or just maybe I, I just want to understand it that bit better, how it calculates. So what transactions are being included in that? This is where the drill down comes in. So if I just click on that, it drill downs, uh, drills down to what I would term level one. So you get this sort of uh, this, this table. So for box one on this UK return, it's telling me, right, in box one for my VAT scheme, these are the transaction types that are being included on the VAT return in box one. And also, these are the tax codes. And it'll put 
on, on the table, the various, the various values. Now, that may be enough just to, if you have that type of query, so you, you might be looking and thinking, well, actually it is a bit higher than what I was expecting. You can drill down, get this table and have a quick look. So, oh yeah, right, I remember now, I had to put that, maybe you had to put a credit through. You forgot it was in your, your VAT period. Sometimes that's enough to jog people's memories. Now, if you need beyond that and you're thinking, well, actually, a sales credit, I wasn't, ex I wasn't expecting that, that value. What you can do is you can click a value anywhere on the grid. So if I do sales credits at T1, for instance, if I then double click it, it will give me a breakdown of that value. So a breakdown of the £407.89, it's telling me, right, these are the transactions that are contributing to that value. I could obviously I can print that out, send it to Excel, etc. And you can do that for any of the, the val any values that you find within this, this area, for instance. If I do journals, again highlight that, then double click it, it gives me the transaction numbers that are, are being included. So anywhere where you see this sort of icon, it means that you can drill down. So I'll do box seven. Again, it shows me the transaction types that are being included in box seven in this instance, it shows me the breakdown of the tax codes, and I've got the appropriate values. And you've got that same functionality there as well, where you can highlight a value, double click it, and it gives you the transaction breakdown. So a really useful way of uh, analyzing your figures and, and learning more about your VAT return if you, if, you, if you want to do that, just to develop your knowledge a little bit as to how it calculates. But as I say, a lot of people don't realize that functionality is there and they'll go straight down the reports route. Now, speaking of reports, if we come back to the, the tasks on the left-hand side here, you've got two options here, print VAT return. We'll come back to that one in a moment. You've also got a reconciliation reports option. Now, if I click that one, it will take me into this reconciliation reports window. Now, I haven't got anything flagged as a favorite, so I'll expand reconciliation reports. It will then normally give you two folders, one relating to your specific VAT scheme. So if anyone sat here today thinking, oh, that's say standard VAT and I'm on cash accounting, uh, it, would, it would pick your setting up and it would give you the appropriate folder. Now, the idea of this is when we expand standard VAT in this case, is that it will show me the various areas of the software that if I was gonna gener generate reports before coming into my VAT return to maybe check my figures, etc., cetera, it's, it's pulling them all into one area. So if I highlight bank, it's saying, right, these are the reports that you would probably, probably generate if you were gonna look at customers. It's got things like the debut customer invoices details. Got the same for credits, discounts. So various options. The idea of this is it's just pulling all those reports into this one area to save you prior to going into your VAR return, going into customers, generating reports into bank reports, nominal reports, etc. So you get them all in one location. Right, just going back to the VAT return itself. So we're still on step two. You've got this option on the left here to print your VAT return itself. So if I click that, it's gonna give me this choice of six options. Now, what I'll do is I'll just, I'm gonna select all the ones that are available just so you can have a quick look at the, the sort of level of detail. Now adjustments is grayed out and that's because I haven't entered any manual adjustments. If I hadn't included that late entry, this one would also be grayed out. So I'll just tick those ones. So I'll click run. Uh, we'll just OK that. And it generates the all of the reports for me. So let's just rearrange the screen a little bit. So let's start with the first tick box, which was the VAT return itself. Again, obviously the information that's included if you're an island, it's going to show you your appropriate reports. So we got a number of reports that were generated there. So in this case, this is just the basic VAT return. So again, if you're 
or sorry, if you're uh, generating your VAT return, this is probably the one, if any, that you definitely want to probably print out and just keep a copy of. You can always get back to it later on, even after you've reconciled if needed. So you don't necessarily need to print it out at this stage. So this is just, in this case, with it being a UK return, the VAT return report itself is just a, a copy of boxes one to nine with the, the relevant calculated figures close out of that one. The second report was the summary report. So that second tick box. Now this is equivalent of when I drill down on that figure in box one. So it shows me that table, gives me that initial breakdown. And it does that for each of the boxes that I could have drilled down on. So in this case, for the UK return, there were seven of them. So it's a seven page report in this case. Next, you have the detailed report. Now, the detailed report can be quite a lengthy report. You can see for this one, I'm already on 28 pages, so it can be quite a lengthy report, this one. And I only had 600 and, what, 691 transactions, so quite a lengthy report. So this is the equivalent of me, when I clicked on the figure in box one, to drill down and then what I did was I let's say I highlighted the, the value against invoices at T1 so this is giving me a breakdown of all of those transactions that would have appeared on that little list and it does that essentially it drills down on each of the boxes and on each of the values on the table within those those boxes and it would group the transactions together on this report, which is why it's quite a lengthy report, but it is a great one to have. If ever you had a VAT inspection, this is the one way you can say, right, well, that figure in box one on my return, for instance, we declared that value. Here's a list of the transactions that make up that value. So it's a good one to have. Again, you don't necessarily need to print this out. You might, if, if probably this one, if you were going to save a copy, you would just save it, export it, and save it as a PDF. But again, you can you can reaccess this report from your archived VAT return, which we'll we'll see in a few minutes' time. Right now, this one, this earlier unreconciled transactions, which was tick box five on that list of reports. So this one is basically those late entries or that one late entry that I included on my VAT return to save you having to run a separate report just in case you needed that. So again, it's the equivalent of that detailed report, giving me a breakdown of the various transactions, which is just one in my case, but obviously that value, because it was a payment, it was an expense in my case. It means it affects box seven, the net value, and also box four, which is the, the VAT value. Final report was similar, but this, it does this one by department. So as well as breaking it down to transaction level and say so my in box one, these transactions at T1, uh, these, this is a list of transactions. It breaks it down by department if you need to go that in depth. Again, that can be a lengthy report, that one. Right, now let's say you've agreed the figures. Uh, just in case you're wondering about sort of agreeing your figures and cross-referencing your reports, we, we are running a reconciliation reports session. So that one will be run, uh, I think it's uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, if you are wanting to sign up for that one to give you an idea of which reports and what you should be comparing to what. So get yourself signed up for that one as well, if you haven't already. But let's say we agree the figures and we're ready to reconcile. So we can just click the option, reconcile VAT return. Now it prompts me, do you want to flag your transactions as VAT reconciled? So those 691 transactions that I included in the VAT return, do you want to essentially tick them to say, right, we've accounted for this transaction on our VAT return, we've included it in the calculation. And if you want to agree the figures, you need to choose yes to that. Little progress bar, mine's quite quick. Just while it does that in the background, it records, it sort of ticks those transactions, it'll update them all on your transactions list. 
just to say you have done that. And it means that when you come to run your next VAT return, it's not going to pick that 691 up again. It'll know to exclude them because the flag is reconciled. Now that takes us on to step three. So we've sort of ready to complete the VAR return and that's what we're covering in this afternoon session at two o'clock. So Jackie will be running through these options down the right hand side. Now what's actually happened when we've clicked reconcile there? Well if I close out of that VAT return you can see on my VAT returns list I've now got this archive. So if I need to get back to that, I can go into VAT, I can highlight the one I'm after, either double click it or with it highlighted, click VAT return at the top, and it takes me back into that screen. Now, in this screen, I can see what period I ran it for, I can see the calculated values, I can drill down on those values still if I needed to do that. Let's see the transaction breakdown. I can print my reports again. So I've still got that option. So if you did need that detailed report, obviously you didn't want to print it out because it was you wanted to save a, a bit of paper here and there, uh, then you can still, obviously you can still preview it here and there if needed. Your verification results that were found at the time, you can see those as well. You click view, still got the, the relevant ones in there. So you've still got a record of that one. And any manual adjustments that you put through at the time, you can view those as well. But other than that, that's your VAT return reconciled. So we've completed steps one and two and the, the relevant tasks involved. So step three, as I say, we're going to be covering that one uh, in this afternoon session. So if you haven't yet registered, please do so. Links will be included on your follow-up email, which you receive in round about an hour's time. Right, now just to confirm again, just sticking with the, the, uh, the style of the, the slides we used earlier when we're looking at step three. You can see from this, the UK on the island uh, VAT return wizards, step three, other than the VAT return itself and how the figures calculate, the layout's exactly the same. So you've got exactly the same options available to you other than the submission, the options do differ. But again, Jackie will be explaining more about that in this afternoon's session. So that brings us to the end of this uh, specific demo. Remember, there's loads of information about supporting you with VAT in our help center. You can access that really, really easily. Just head along to sage.co.uk forward slash help. So a great resource, so do, do use that if, if you've got any sort of questions. Now, if you've got any questions for us at this stage, I can see uh, Jackie, Tina and Abby have been very busy in the session today. Uh, typing away, hopefully you've gotten an answer to your questions. We're just about on top of those. Uh, but if you've got any last minute questions, if you want to pop them in now, and we'll try and pick those up before we finish. If you weren't quite with us at the beginning of the session when I mentioned how to do that, all you need to do, click your little uh, speech bubble icon on your toolbar down the right, and it will it will expand and you'll be able to type in the box in the bottom right hand corner. Remember, we are running seven sessions in total, or seven different topics in total, I should say. So do get yourself registered. Link will be included in your follow-up email, which you receive in around about an hour's time. Now, just while I give you a chance to key in any final questions, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about our, what, what, what you will hear about in the next few months, which is the Sage Network, and specifically the customer account portal. So it's quite an interesting option, this one. And it's, it's a way of giving your customers access to their account information. So if you think about, uh, if you think about sort of the, the, the types of questions you'll get from your customers, I've lost my invoice, can I have a copy? Can you email it again? What's the balance on my account? When's it due? So that type of thing, you can give your customers access to that information via the customer account portal. I'm gonna play a little video just while I give you a chance to, to pop in your questions. Last just a couple of minutes, and then we'll come back and start picking up some additional questions at this stage. So bear with me, we'll set that going, and then we'll come back to you live in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. 
Sage Network. It brings business together. Connecting the world's accounting systems and automating any business workflow, even if they don't use Sage accounting software. And now we're making the process even easier with Customer Account Portal. It gives customers real-time, self-service access to invoices and payment status, simplifying your account's receivable workflows so your customers can easily see what's paid, due and overdue. And you can worry less about late payments or invoice admin. So how does it work? Setting up is seamless. Simply personalize it to your business Then invite your customers to use it with a secure passwordless link. Customers can then access their invoices and payment status 24-7 in one secure place and know what needs to be paid for and when. You can also send batch messages to multiple customers at once so you can get complete visibility of their account status and metrics and see who's accessed and downloaded invoices. Plus, you can save time using email templates to send monthly statements, overdue balance reminders and even follow up with specific customers. The Customer Account Portal provides one secure place for your customers to access their invoices 24-7 so they always know what needs to be paid and when it's due, helping you get paid faster and saving you time. That way you can focus on adding value to your business. And this is just a start. We're going to be adding even more to the Sage Network to simplify your workflows like new apps and AI features. With the future of connected accounting, save time, increase visibility and get paid faster. Sage, helping business flow. Okay, so that was just a quick video. And as I say, you'll, you'll be hearing a, a little bit more about the Sage Network over the coming months. Uh, customer account poll is really just the start, as was mentioned in that video. So there'll be more options coming. If you want to find out more, I've included some information on your follow-up emails. If you all want to get involved in that at this stage, it is available, uh, then you, you can you can get in touch about that. So the link's included on the follow-up email. Right, keep your questions coming. Uh, we're still very busy uh, with the questions, so do bear with us. A couple that I'm gonna pick up on, I'll just go back to my screen very briefly, and I'll, I'll pick up on a, a few of them that have uh, been mentioned there. So question from Helen earlier, should you still retain a manual printed copy or not? Obviously with your VAT return, Helen, uh, where you've got this VAT return archive, you probably find that most people will print a copy of the VAT return. So you've got, you know, if it was a UK VAT return, you've got boxes one to nine in printed format with the, the relevant figures on that you agreed and reconciled to at the time. But remember, you can always, if you've got in your, in your VAT ledger, if your VAT returns listed, then you can always go back into it and you can get back to those figures. And if needed, you can go back to the print option and you can you can generate a copy of that one again if needed. Obviously the Irish VAT return, it works in exactly the same way. So you've got the same option available to you. Another question related to the chart of accounts. Uh, does the chart of accounts itself affect our VAT return? in terms of information pulling through. Not at all is the answer to that one. It makes no difference on your chart of accounts layout whatsoever. Uh, it's when you're running the VAT return, it's gonna look specifically at your VAT scheme. Obviously, whether you are UK or Ireland, and also it will look at the individual transactions themselves. So chart of accounts, no impact whatsoever. Uh, another question from Haley as well. It's going to be your first time reconciling the VAT. 
So it can always feel a little bit daunting, that one, Haley. So a lot to take in. Uh, so you mentioned there, what's the best way to reconcile the transactions manually before you use the wizard? So really, best best advice I can give you on that one is to get yourself signed up for our uh, VAT reconciliation report session. And we'll go into that one in a bit more detail. So what should you be comparing with what? So when you're running reports, what can you compare to the, the figures that would calculate on your VAT return just to make sure everything's right and everything agrees? So get yourself signed up for the VAT reconciliation report session. And that will explain that in a bit more detail. Of course, there is information in our help center as well, should you need it. Maria, you were just asking where can you, you get the handouts for each webinar? So we give you the opportunity to do that during the session itself. You've got that little icon on your toolbar. Looks like the a bit of paper with a corner folded over. If you click that, you'll then have the option to select it and obviously uh, download that handout. So we'll do take this opportunity while you're on the session uh, to get that. Uh, Adi, you mentioned they're moving from uh, cash accounting to uh, the standard uh, scheme. Uh, so that one's... Interesting question, that one, changing scheme. So there is loads of detailed steps available from our help center on how to do that. So do check that out, because depending where, what you're moving from and to will be dependent on obviously what the steps are. And, and some of them, you will stop using certain tax codes and you will set up alternatives as a way of ensuring that your, your next fat return calculates correctly. So again, check that out in the in our help center, uh, Eri, and you'll get the exact steps that you need. Right, we're just about on top of those questions. I think we're just finishing off the, those last couple. Uh, so slightly overrun, but just a couple of minutes. Uh, so let me quickly take an opportunity to thank you for coming along this morning. I hope you have enjoyed it. It's hopefully given you a little bit more confidence. So a few of you have mentioned it's your first VAT return. Hopefully you're not feeling as daunted now. Remember, there's loads of great information to support you available from our help center. So no need to struggle with it. Our support team's available uh, to sort of help you as well if needed. So do use those resources that you have. No need to struggle with anything. That's what we're here for. So thanks for coming along. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you've got any feedback for us, there will be a little survey pop up. So it should take you probably about a minute maximum to complete that. Uh, loads of just rate us on a scale, things like that. But if you've got any ideas, thoughts that you want to share with us, including topics you'd like to see covered going forward, then pop it on the, on the survey that, that appears as you leave. Your follow-up email will be with you in around about an hour's time. If you all want to register for this afternoon's session, do get yourself registered. You can register right up until the last minute. No problem with that. There is a specific link included to this afternoon's session if you are interested. So get yourself signed up for that one. It starts at two o'clock. So you'll get that email in round about an hour's time. Once again, many thanks for coming along. Take care, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you on the other sessions as well. Many thanks.